Uh, I turn now to Toby Simon. And uh, Toby and I uh, have been working together on this area in Bangalore. We are both from Bangalore. He is the true practitioner here because his company, Synergia, has been actively involved in finding cybersecurity solutions. And the foundation is looking into the future. So Toby tells me he's going to be talking about artificial intelligence and quantum computing. So Toby, over to you. <coughs> uh, thank you, Ambassador Seddon. Uh, thank you, Portia. Uh, Ambassador Leta Reddy, uh, Ajay Prakash Soni, and Gulshan Rai. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to come here, and I thought I'll take a little different spin about talking about the future of uh, cybersecurity. Um, basically, I would like to touch upon two aspects. One is the human aspect, and the second is the technology aspects, which I will cover uh, basically artificial intelligence and quantum computing. In the first, which is the human element, you know, the challenge going forward is to decide who is going to man the tower, who's going to man the fort. Given that the surface area of cybersecurity extends well beyond networks, yeah, it is going to be extremely important to find the right person with the right interdisciplinary skills to guard the fort. Okay? Now, from the research that we have done with some of the finest security practitioners in the world, which means people who are actually doing it, we find that the maximum surface area of networks and cybersecurity is about 18 to 20%, which means that theoretically, if we are able to protect our networks 100%, we are still exposed by about 80%. That's something that we really need to think. The second is cybersecurity as we go forward, as uh, uh, Dr. Gulshan Rai said, is going to be a problem that, ne that needs to be dealt by the top management or the board. It cannot be left to technology people because, as I said, it goes well beyond the uh, technological or the uh, digital narrative. Number three, which is also extremely important from the human element, is to understand the nature of supply chains in the whole digital thread. Most people don't look at it. They just look at the, the computer that you own in the office or, or the software that you have bought, but you don't realize where it is coming from. And as a, a, again, the earlier speakers had said, there is so much of heterogeneity that you really don't know where the plug comes in. Now let me move to the uh, technology part of it. The technology part is, is, is a little more uh, interesting and complicated, and here I will speak about AI. And most of you, I'm sure, know what is AI, and I think there was a session before this, so I will speak about AI from a uh, philosopher's level. Uh, the argument against AI is driven by fear, fear of the unknown and fear of intelligence. Here I would like to bring a factor which is called singularity. What, how many of us know singularity? Yeah, there are uh, people. Yeah, so singularity is the future point at which artificial intelligence will exceed human intelligence, where immediately the machine will make themselves rapidly smarter and smarter and smarter, reaching a superhuman level of intelligence that stuck as we are in the mud of our limited mentation we can't fathom. In fact, AI is artificial intelligence at the level and created by human intelligence and AI++ plus plus is artificial intelligence above the human person, and AI++ plus 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 is super intelligence, which is constitutive of singularity. Let me explain this a little further. The key process is presumably the creation of one class of machine by the other, and that is the challenge. Okay? Uh, it might look like fiction today, but most fictions that I have seen in the past have come true, so that's why I have started seriously considering this as a probability. Okay. We have added, for convenience, human intelligence. And the central idea is then, HI, which is human intelligence, will create AI. And AI will later create at the same level of, AI will have the same level of intelligence as HI. AI will then create AI++. AI++ will create AI++++, with the ascension proceeding perhaps forever, but any, at any rate progressing long enough for us to be as ants outstripped by gods, okay? The, no, why is it possible? The three 
21st century technologies, which is genetics, nanotechnology, and robotics, which we call GNR, are so powerful that they can spawn whole new classes of accidents and abuses. And this is not theory. We work in nanotechnology, so we are aware of the, 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 the sort of opportunities that are coming up there. Most dangerously, for the first time, these accidents and abuses are widely within the reach of individuals or small groups. You don't have to be a nation state to do this. They will not require large facilities or rare raw materials. Knowledge alone will enable the use of them. So here is the, 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 the challenge. Thus we have the possibility, not just of weapons of mass destruction, but what we call knowledge-enabled knowledge mass destruction, which is KMD. So you can use this new word, uh, WMD is common, so it's KMD. This destructiveness is hugely amplified by the power of self-replication. So I, uh, uh, Ambassador Saran was asking me to talk a little about uh, intellectual property and the trade war, which I've just mentioned one. You see, under Section 16.2 of the Copyright Design and Patent Act 1988, Artificial intelligence systems cannot violate copyrights or regulations as copyrights can only be infringed by a person. So there is a, a separate part of it which you had asked me to cover. Now, there are two feeds for AI. One is data, and we live in the era of big data, so there is plenty of data. And the second is computer speed, and that is what I would call, uh, infer to as quantum computers, okay? so. What is quantum computing? So it's a game-changing technology for cybersecurity. Due to the inherent speed boost, it offers to solve complex mathematical problems. So all encryptions are maths, and, and the way you crack it in the speed, that is how you break all uh, encryptions. Digital computers run on data that is encoded on a binary system, where the state of any single bit can be zero or one. Whereas quantum goes beyond binary, by virtue of its qubits, ability to, re to reside in more than one or two positions. A qubit can represent a quantum state made up of two or more values simultaneously, called superpositions. In simple terms, a qu qubit superposition provides more computing power in the same space. So here is, here is the, uh, you know, the red flag. According to the Institute of Quantum Computing at the University of Waterloo in Canada, it is estimated there is one in seven chance that some fundamental public key crypto will be broken by quantum by 2026, one in seven, and one in two chance that a the same public crypto will be broken by 2031. That's not too far. Thus, any nation that is able to position itself as pioneers in quantum computing will be in an advantageous position to access information from across the world while safeguarding its own data. So here is where, you know, for me, the challenge for Aadhaar came. And here we talk about intergenerational equity, that are we able to guarantee that going forward 10 years, 20 years, that we will be able to protect our data because we really don't know. Quantum computers can happen. And two of the countries in the world that are spending so much of research and uh, effort on quantum computers, United States and China. And Russia is, is just close behind. So you have big countries coming, and the challenge for smaller countries is, where do you have the resources to do this research to find something faster, smarter, and better? Okay? So, how the, the, again, the question will be that as long as humans can be persuaded to part with a secret and appropriate circumstances, all cryptography will be broken. And this will be the chal challenge going forward for AI and quantum combined together in the world of cybersecurity. I think I have taken five minutes and we can go for questions later. Thank you very much. Thank you.